Your portrait. Hey, YouTube. So I'm trying to like get everything in play, get everybody here so we can all kind of have fun tonight. So the lines are open for everyone who is on the go-to webinar. And I want you guys to put your questions in the box. We have not seen each other for a while now. So I know a lot has happened either in the setup of your business or the scaling of your business. And we want to be able to support you through both of those processes. So any questions you have, hey, Samuel, it's good to see you here. Please take a moment and do so in the box. Now, if you have experienced some successes, and I'm talking about some cool, amazing, exciting things have happened in your business, I want you to feel free to share that too. Now, don't get me wrong, a success doesn't have to be I landed a billion dollar contract, hey Deborah, or I um or I um just placed 15 candidates. That doesn't necessarily have to be the only type of success that you can share. You can also share successes that celebrate little small milestones, right? Little tiny milestones that you were reaching throughout throughout your business, right? So if you have been working on a certain part of your business for a long period of time and you weren't seeing success and recently you had a, a breakthrough, that's a success that we can celebrate as a community. Hey, April, it's good to see you. Um, if you have had a success where you um, you finally get, broke your fear of getting on the phone and you called that hiring manager, that's a success that you can share. If you finally got into the point where, uh, I don't know, whatever it is, but successes are where you have actually experienced some type of joyous feeling, <laughs> some type of joyous feeling throughout your body, and now you have the ability to move forward in your business. So I like to get those types of successes too, and I see them already coming in. So you know I'm gonna have my maracas so fired up and ready, right? Also, if you have had challenges, if you have had failures or disappointments or, you know, maybe your expectation had not been met in a certain area of the business and you want to share that, feel free to do so as well. We're here as a support community for you to help you get through that next phase in your business, right? So you can share those too. So this call is all about you. It is about your questions. It is about shifting your mindset if need be. It is about um, 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 sharing the things that have just absolutely not worked for you. It is about sharing the things that are absolutely working for you. <laughs> And just being in some good energy with people who genuinely are excited and passionate about running and scaling and growing their niche recruitment and staffing business. Hello. All right now. Y'all getting fired up. We got so many people on YouTube. Oh my gosh. Hey guys. All right. So this is really a sneak peek. Now I'm going to chime in. Typically I start off with some really cool information. But you know, you know how I do, right? So first of all, I want to tell y'all, I got the books. Ah, uh, look at that. I ordered like seven copies so I could give some away. Seven is like one of my lucky numbers. So I finally did my first piece of work on Amazon. It's so interesting because people will call me all the time and say, I'm surprised you're not on Amazon. And I'll be like, Arr. it's not as easy as it looks. And so um, finally we got the book and it's cool. So first of all, full transparency, anybody who's purchased the book, I'm so appreciative for supporting. Uh, my goal is really just to help people. I wrote this book in like two hours one night. I had gotten phone calls back to back to back and where people were asking kind of the same questions that were looking to set up the business. And, and um, they were, one guy actually, to be honest with you, one guy actually angered me. And I don't get angry when I get calls when people, are, but he was, he was so um, adamant that it doesn't take much to start the business and to run the business. It's like, all I need is an office, and, um, you know, all I need is an office and a job board and this business is up. And I'm like, 
you know, to some degree, yes, but to some degree, no, like you're missing so many key things. I was talking to a vendor today uh, really quickly and we were talking about that because he was coming on to the podcast and he said, D, it really hurts me to see people come into this business and not even taking the time to really understand the value that they're giving, right? The value that they're putting out there. They're really just coming in the business and looking for that quick dollar. We had this whole conversation about it. So anyway, this particular guy that day I was talking to was kind of like that. And um, he was on the phone with his partner and I was getting defensive because I'm like, no, you want to you want to set the business up properly. You want to create a strategy. You want to know who your market is. And he's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, I don't I don't need that. I think that's just you being a coach trying to take somebody's money. Oh, my gosh, my feelings were hurt. Right. I said, OK, so tell me what applicant tracking system are you using? He said, what's that? I said, so I started asking him questions. He didn't know anything that I asked him. And I was just like furious. So the phone hung up. I swear to God, I did not hang up on him. The phone hung up. I went back to the system and, di and dialed the number back again. But when I dialed the number back, I got his wife. And I was like, hi, this is Dee Williams. I was just talking to, she was like, Dee Williams. Oh my gosh. And I was like, I was just talking to your husband. She said, did he drive you crazy? And I said, man, am I glad I'm on the phone with you. <laughs> And she was like, I know how he is. And we started talking and she was asking me, is it as easy as he says it is? And I said, well, it can be and it cannot be. Like, how much money are you working with? And you know what I'm saying? Do you have a network and what's your niche? And I'm going through all of these questions. And she's like, it's not what we thought it was. Like, it really is a little bit more. So anyway, that was like the, the, the last conversation I had that day. And I went to my computer full of passion, like, ah, you know, I've got to tell these people what's involved with starting a niche recruitment and staffing business. And I started writing and that's how this book came to life. That's a true story. And so <laughs> I stepped away from it for like two weeks and then I came back and I got even more into it. And then, um, and then I just started putting together, I think the hardest part was just trying to make it look because it's my first published book. It's like, make it look like a book, but it came out really well. I was very excited. It was, you know, 100% my words. You see a lot of people who publish things on Amazon, get someone to do it for them and they don't know anything about the topic. Well, I was like fueled by my love for you guys to write this. So it's really tiny, but it's cool. And then we have two more books coming out. How to start a resume writing business will be out as well as the niche solution. Now the niche solution, this is kind of a precursor to the niche solution. So this is like give to somebody like wanting to start the business and you're just trying to figure out like, okay, what am I dealing with with starting this business? That's this book. When we do the niche, the niche solution, it's just going to be like step by step, almost similar to what I'll be teaching with the new academy program. So I'm really excited. And it's the same information, just restructured in a way to where I'm holding you all accountable a little bit more. So you can't run from me. You can't sit back and say, oh, it's been three, six months. I haven't done this because I've been busy. Oh, no, uh-uh. You're going to make this a priority and you're going to bring this business to life. Can I get a hello? Hello. 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 I got cameras everywhere. <laughs> okay, let me be like, we got to just spice this up a little bit. <laughs> okay, so... I've been looking, y'all. I see y'all are putting uh, stuff in the box, sharing things with us. That's great. Judy said, we are ready. I know, Judy. And I've been like holding you by the tongue, making you drool, you know, about this new program that we're launching. And I'm still not ready. I wanted to launch it tonight. But I will give y'all the link. Y'all can go to it. The video, we just y'all just can't sign up. Okay, you just can't sign up just yet because I got to add one th uh, like thank you video. Hey, Letitia, how you doing? I got to add one thank you video, but I'll give you the link and you guys can go there and play around in there. And then when I say go in the group, then you know what I'm saying? You guys can go in there. So I'm actually giving away free training. So I'm going to do kind of like the first module or two will be free because honestly, I feel now I probably shouldn't say this since we have special guests, but I think our special guests should get to know me for who I am and just like, no, just <laughs> like, 
like, y'all know I don't cut any corners, but I feel like, you know, if I can get people set up on their own, then it'll be great for me to teach the and getting them up and going once they already have the business set up. The setup part is like, is so important. It's your foundation, but it's so much different as far as activity and stuff so forth that has to take place once you already set the business up and i feel like it's really important that um so a lot of people don't take the time to fully set the business up they just go get it licensed and then they say okay i'm ready to start calling people and that's the part that i don't want to happen which is why i didn't get rid of it you know what i'm saying which is why i still said i feel like that's something that has to be address like i want to help people with that part because i want them to understand that there's so much more that has to be done before you pick that phone up and ever talk to a candidate before you ever talk to a client and that's just about being ready and prepared you know it's, it's one thing to do something it's another to do something and be prepared when you're doing it right so that's my that's my goal is to make sure that you guys are prepared and ready to just rock it out hey asia how are you it's good to see you hey karen it's good to see you too okay so questions you put in the box successes you put in the box the chat box uh challenges or failures or disappointments or what have you you put in the box and we'll talk about it and and take you there so first deborah said hey deborah she says I did purchase and download. It's awesome on 526. Thank you for all your work, putting it together and valuable information. Thank you. Mwah. I had so much fun. It was for you. I promise. <laughs> Thank you so much. Um, we had another question that came in. Um, Judy, first of all, Judy wanted to share a success. She says she is finally a Loxo subscriber. She had the training and she's getting ready to import her candidates into the app. Let's give you some love on that. Yes. Judy, that's awesome, right? That's that's super duper awesome. Loxo is a great ATS. People, you know, my ATS video, I've been kind of playing around with getting the video out. Hey, how are you? And, and not really playing around from that perspective, but really testing the technologies out before I come out there and say this is the best ATS and, and people go out there. Right now, I'm using two applicant tracking systems. I'm using Crelate and I'm using Loxo. And when I say I'm using them, meaning I'm actively recruiting in both of those applicant tracking systems. And for now on, when I do live trainings or, hey, Trudy, it's good to see you. It's been a while, right? <laughs> Um, for now on, when I teach these classes that we do within the academy and YouTube will see that I'm starting to beef my videos up in you on YouTube as well, that um, and which are also being streamed in my started staffing biz on Facebook group. You guys are going to start seeing me really dive into using Loxo and using Crelate, right? So you can see how you should be able to use it within your business. All right, so that'll be really cool. I am actually recruiting pretty aggressively right now. And so you guys are going to see some of the things in a couple in upcoming videos that I'm doing to be creative and to step out of the box. So I'm really excited about you seeing that now. I'm recruiting for a recruiter in the Chicago area as well as a sales and business development person. And I actually have videos um, where I'm recruiting people from those videos that I'm putting out there. It's my first try round. I don't see it happening a lot with um, with anyone who's recruiting out there now, but I'm going to put it out there and see what happens. These are the type of things, again, that we want to get, you know, that I want to get you guys in the mindset of doing, like stepping outside of your box. I mean, it's good to look and see what your competitors are doing, but that doesn't mean you have to do the same exact thing that they're doing. Like what sets you apart from everyone else? What are you doing that allows you to stand out in your business? And don't just say it's the quality of your candidates because that's BS. Right, because everybody is really pulling from the same candidate pool unless you have very strong sourcing skills. 
and or very strong networking skills. So don't say just this, you know, oh, the quality of my candidates. What set you apart? I've been pushing this. I don't know if y'all have noticed this in the group. I've been asking you guys over the past 30 days, what sets your business apart? What's your value proposition? What sets your business apart? What's your value proposition? What sets your business apart? What's your value proposition? Don't create somebody else's value proposition. You create the value proposition. And you always create that value proposition based on what your competitors are and are not doing and based on what your clients want and need. Anything else is not a value proposition. Hello. Anything else is not, a, it's, at least it's not a strong value proposition. It has to val it has to be valuable to your clients. It has to be something they want to need. Don't say talent. We already know they want to need talent, but you should know what's going on in the company and why they need that talent. Hello, how many people feel what I'm saying? You've got to know why they need the talent. What role does that talent place? Hey, Shanta, how you doing? It's good to see you. <laughs> so glad you're here. All right. Deborah said, use and love Crelate. Crelate is one of my favorite applicant tracking systems. Are you kidding me? <laughs> Are you kidding me? All right. Um, so, yes. Now, we had another question here. Well, I've been running spades tournaments to the public in my hometown for the past seven years and last month. Um, and last month, and a local franchise approached me, and now they are hosting my spades tournaments. I'm excited about this level. Okay, Janice, but what does that have to do with your niche recruitment and staffing business? <laughs> but I'm, I'm happy for your success for sure. So cute. I love that. All right, awesomeness. Okay, great. Any other questions? Any other successes? How are you doing in your business? Ronaldo, what's going on in your business? Would you be open to sharing? Are you open to sharing this evening? Shanta, what's going on in your business? You guys are getting some good information. I know you're implementing it. Let's talk about it. Don't be shy. While we're waiting for everyone to respond, <laughs> while we're waiting for everyone to start, Judy is on, she's on fire tonight. She says, finally locks. Okay, we already did that one. She says, oh, okay, okay, Ronaldo, I apologize. I understand. She says, um, Judy says, also connected to DC Employment Services staffing and recruitment app that allows me to post jobs and recruit DC residents. That's awesome. So Judy, you're doing technical writing, is that correct? Can I open your line? I don't know, I don't wanna be disrespectful to anyone, but I would like to at least talk to you. Can I open your line, Judy, is that okay? Okay, perfect, thank you so much. Hold on one second. Judy, can you hear me? Yes, I can. Can you hear me? Yes. Hey, how you feeling this evening? I'm great. It's so good to see you smiling. I'm glad to see you. <laughs> I know. Look, but you know, this smile has to stay here through good, bad, and different, and all of that stuff, right? We got to keep the positive <laughs> energy flowing. <laughs> so, yes. <laughs> so, tell me how things are going in your business. I know you're doing technical writing, right? Yes, I am. Okay. Technical writing and business analyst. Okay. Technical writing and business analysis, which is there, it's like a great, those are great areas. They blend together and there's sometimes it's one role, sometimes two. So the, that's my niche area. Okay. Um, I feel like, and you know, you know, we always feel overwhelmed. There's so much to do, but I feel like I'm finally getting some ground. You know, I'm, I'm talking to people. I've had appointments with um, several procurement officers, um, not hiring managers, but I'm getting there. Mm -hmm. And um, and as I said, building the foundation. So okay. that's, it's step by step, day step, by day. Step by step. But, but moving. But moving. That's what I like to hear. So are you doing this full-time or are you doing this part-time right now? I'm still part-time. Part-time. Okay. So do you have a schedule that you are going by on a consistent basis to ensure that you're working in the business every day? Um, I, in my head, yes. And sometimes <laughs> I write it down, but then I, 
if, if I just get off track by 30 minutes, I find that I might waste a whole evening. So yeah. to be honest, I have that. I know that that's what's necessary. I'm not doing it consistently. Yeah. So I really want to challenge you to challenge yourself to every day, no matter what, it, you know, especially during the work week, like creating this this pattern for yourself, this habit. And that's sometimes a, a challenging thing to do, but I'm gonna, um, Judy, you know I love you, right? So I'm gonna tell you Thank something. You, <laughs> As you know, I'll never forget when I thought I thought I lost my bag, how you just like came downstairs at the hotel and was just so mm -hmm. awesome to me. So I really appreciate you. So I'm gonna share something with you. So um, personally, okay. on a personal level, you know, I'm so good at a lot of things. Yes, I'm braggadocious. I'm so good about a lot of things. But there's one thing that I have the hardest time with. And um, for me, that is like working out every day, like creating a habit to work out every day is so challenging for me. Okay. You ask me to write a book, right. I can write a book. You ask me to build a building. <laughs> you ask me to jump out of a helicopter naked. I can do that too. But working okay. out every day is the most challenging thing for me. And I have gotten yeah. to a point now where I am learning how to uh, associate the, the passion and love that I have for everything else with working out so that it's something that I don't feel like I have to do, but it's something that um, it is just a natural habit like showering or brushing my teeth or what have you. And okay. I share that with you because I want you to know that I understand your journey. Right. Because mine isn't about the business. Mine is about working out, but it's still the same journey. But I don't want you to give up. I want you to keep, keep, keep trying to create that habit for yourself. So if to today you haven't spent an hour on the business after the Q&A call, I want you to really say, I'm not going to go to bed tonight until I spend an hour on the business. And tomorrow, put it on your, your clock, your timer and do it again. And every day, just commit okay. yourself to it until you no longer have to commit yourself to it. It just happens. And if you get nervous or if you get to the point where yeah. you're like, I don't, I want you to tag me in the group and I okay. want you to say D just like that. <laughs> okay. Okay. And so, and then when I don't want to work out, I'm going to tag you in the group and right. I'm going to say That's Judy right. and we're going to just hold ourselves accountable. So when you see me tag you and you see that, oh my gosh, D's not making it. <laughs> Right. Yes. And I, you know what? See, see, I, I love that you use that example because I can say that as of June 4th, just a couple of days ago, I celebrated my second anniversary of working out consistently four to five days a week. So I can help you. I can help you. You help me. Yes. I love it. So, and so my future is bright. Yes. You can, look, you can do it. We can do it. Yes. Okay, so great. So thank you for that. That was a perfect example for me because I have incorporated working out as a love. Like you said, so I, I now I have it to relate to. Yeah. And I will definitely start out by setting my, I, and I do, I have been doing that, but I'll make sure I, 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 respond when I get that along. Yes. When I get that reminder to work, I need to actually stop and do it. Yes. That's the difference. And Judy, the time that I have spent with you, I can say without a shadow of a doubt that you would do an amazing job in this business. I mean, wow. you will rock Thank this business out without a shadow. I just, that's why I really wanted to talk to you tonight to see what's holding you back. Because once that, once you get going, it's going to be over. You're going to, you're going to rock it out. Woo! Okay, thank you. Receive that. Receive it. I receive it. I love it. All so right. I rise to the challenge starting tonight. Yes. Absolutely. I love it. All right, Judy. Thank you so much for sharing. <laughs> She's my sweetheart. I love Judy. Like, oh my gosh, when we were doing the boot camp in um New Orleans, I, you know, if anybody that knows me, y'all know I travel with this like gray bag. But this gray bag has everything in it, like my whole, my laptop, my everything. And I got left the hotel after a, a four or five days of training straight. I didn't even have a voice and my bag was gone. When I say it was gone, I was like, ah! And so I called Judy, I was like, Judy! And she was staying in the hotel we did the event at. 
and she did not have to come downstairs. It was freezing cold. She came out of her room downstairs. I'm bawling in front of her, so she's hugging me. Like, <laughs> and I'm like, this lady doesn't know me. She just met me during this boot camp, and she was just really there for me. My daughter actually was the one that found the bag in the hotel, but it was just so awesome. I was like, man, you know, it's just great people out here. You never know. Hey, Tanisha, it's good to see you. I love Tanisha. She was there at the New Orleans boot camp. What else do we have going on there? Janice says she's guilty. <laughs> I did ask her. <laughs> you do have your own business, Jam, Jam Consulting Company. Tell me about Jam Consulting. Do you provide recruitment and staffing or are you thinking about adding that onto your business model? That sounds, and what does the Jam stand for? J-A-M, what does that stand for? I'm interested in hearing. Hey, Jackie Lewis, it's good to see you. <laughs> yes, thank you, Judy. Thank you. Shanta, you're not doing your rotation either? either. What's going on with that? Ronaldo, not doing your rotation. What's going on with you guys? You already know that is basic one-on-one. -on -one. Listen, I say this all the time. Trudy, Judy is amazing, really. I had to just chime in. But I say this all the time, like it's fortune in the follow-up. How many times have you guys, if you guys do a search in the Facebook group, and you look at Trudy, Trudy, like every other month, she's posting in the group, um, fortune in the follow-up. I followed up with this client and now look at the outcome of this. I followed up with that client. Now look at the outcome of this. Like she's always talking about the fortune in the follow-up and she's showing you that that's a true example of how it's used. I'm always preaching the follow-up. That's what the rotation schedule is all about. It's not to torture you. It's so that you can keep the relationship, keep the flame going in the relationships that you're attempting to build with potential candidates or clients. And maybe it's just a shift in mindset, right? Just a shift in mindset for you guys as you're thinking about the rotation. A lot of people don't want to do the follow-up phone calls or the follow-up emails. But I want you to think about this, and you guys hear me say this all the time, and it's not going to change. You know, Trudy said, this is that's the fun stuff. Follow-up is the fun stuff. But think about your spouse. For everyone who has a husband or wife, I want you to think about it. Or boyfriend, or girlfriend, or partner, or whatever your choice is. Do you, Would that person be in your life if, e if either you didn't consistently reach out to them, or they didn't consistently reach out to you, okay? Be, I'm asking, that's a question mark. You, Many of you wouldn't be married if that guy wouldn't have kept calling you or bothering you for some of you. Many of you wouldn't be married if you weren't aggressive in pursuing that woman, right? So business is the same way. Building business development and sales, it's the same way. Your best friend, Many of you wouldn't be friends with that person if you guys didn't continue to call each other or go meet each other at the park after school, whatever the case may be. These are real relationships that you are building with companies, with people and companies and with candidates. And that requires communication on a consistent basis, a strong level of communication, whether you have a job order for it or a job for them or not. Whether you have, whether you're selling or not, you have to have those conversations, okay? <clears throat> Fortune and the follow-up. When, thing, when things get tight or when they're ready to make a new decision, you know, you're, you will be the first person that comes to mind. But when you don't, and I, I should do a video, because this is definitely one of the number one reasons a recruitment, a, a recruitment and staffing business will not grow. This is a great reason for a recruitment and staffing business to not grow. Because you don't follow up. You've got to follow up. That's imperative. Totally. Yes. Shanta, promise me you're following up. Promise me. Ronaldo, promise me. <laughs> Promise me. Hey, C, how are you? Is it possible to scale and start up at the same time with a strong marketing strategy? Uh, I would say no. And, and I say that because scaling isn't, you know, when you talk about scaling, you're talking about expanding the, the model of your business 
um, you know, and, and that has, that typically happens with pace, right? You know, when you're growing a business, it does not just bing like that. It doesn't happen that way. And believe you me, when you see stories like that, they put in a lot of groundwork years and years prior to that being even taking place. Do you see what I'm saying? So when you're thinking about scaling, scaling is something that happens once you have proven success in your business that's repeatable. You do not scale until you have that. That's one of the reasons why I switched the program around and separate it in three different phases. You set up the business first. Once you set the business up properly, then you start working in the business and generating activity, right? And you may do that for a year, maybe two, maybe even three years. Some people, maybe even four years, getting the systems down, testing things, analyzing things, retesting things, re-implementing things until you have a formula that works for you, your customer base, and your candidate base. And once you work, then you duplicate, you duplicate, you duplicate. And that is a form of scaling, but you duplicate initially just so that you can make sure that it's a repeatable process. Then you go into your scale mode. So it's not something that you just go off and you do immediately. Okay, that's the, and I'm going to say this with love and respect, but that's the mindset of a rookie. Okay, real entrepreneurs, when, you, when you're in a startup business, you understand that there is a growth period. And again, I say that with love. It's in a growth period. It's to help you expand your mindset around the business. But you want to stick with a process that will allow you to, cre to create an efficiently successful business. Uh, um, and, and, and again, scaling takes time. Does that make sense? I say that with love. Mwah, Jackie, you know I love you. <laughs> My voice is so strong sometimes. <laughs> yeah, expanding the service with other, expanding the model with other services is this something you should definitely do. Definitely. But that doesn't necessarily, like when I think of scaling, scaling is, is double, triple, quadruple, your client base, your revenue, you know, and, and so much more. So you can add on a thousand services as long as they make sense and they fall in line to your with your overall financial strategy and the goals of the company, then you should be fine. Yeah. Thank you so much. See, I love I love my people. <laughs> okay, I see Janice. Well, Janice, are you here to start a staffing business or to sell your services? Tell me the truth. Because this is a staffing only group. That's all we do. We are we focus solely on people who are looking to start and or scale their niche recruitment and staffing business. So that's where we're at here. Latasha, I cut my boot camps out because I am changing things around. I'm I've really become more picky about who I want in my community. I don't want lazy people anymore. And not everybody in the community is lazy. I kick them out. I've been pulling, booting people out like crazy, you guys. The number has been dwindling, right? I don't want people who are complainers or people who can't afford to invest in themselves or the business. I want people who are serious about bringing this business to life, and I'm not playing with it. And so those people are always going to support the things that I'm doing to help grow them in the community. And uh, those boot camps, I, you know, they were great being small because I had an opportunity to connect with so many people um, and to really work with the, the participants one on one. But at the same time, it was super expensive for me and um, and I wasn't getting a return on my investment. So now they'll be incorporated into the Million Mile Walk program, which will be launched in a couple of weeks. And, um, and it'll be a yearly thing for those group members only. I don't believe I'll do any more boot camps like that. But we are having a convention in 2018. You're more than welcome to come. I've been lining up our guest speakers while I've been doing this podcast. So it's about to go down. I'm excited about that. I hope that was helpful. I love you, Latasha. But also, we do a lot of online classes, just so you know. 
No, that's fine. Yeah, no, Janice. We don't sell services in this group. Only me. <laughs> Only the boss lady. <laughs> but I, I love and appreciate your energy. Are you kidding? So stick around for the rest of the course. I'm going to remove you out the group later. But for now, stick around and feel this positive energy and hang out with us because we do appreciate you being here. All right? Latasha said, I would love to come. Okay, great. The convention is going to be, well, we said initially in Vegas, but I think I'm going to leave it here in Atlanta just because uh, this is my first one. So I, I figure keep it at home base would be the better way to go. And then maybe a year from now or two, then we'll take it out on the road again. But we'll do it here in Atlanta. It's going to be really cool. Lots of startup investors. It's going to be a lot of stuff. Asia, you know you can make the convention. It'll be great. Are you kidding? Listen, I'm trying to get some of my staffingpreneurs to write books too. I want you guys to have a good uh, handle on your niche market space. That's one of the things that's super important in today's society is really being able to show value. Now, Trudy, Constance, probably Kim, she's been here a long time, Henry, um, I said there are three things that you can do in this business that will really set you apart and really give you guys an opportunity to show a different side of you and in your niche space. And I said that's blogging and reaching out to customers and asking for their thoughts on your blog. I said that it was podcasting, running your own podcast and tapping into your community, your niche market. And the other one was writing a book, becoming an author for your niche space. I haven't seen many of you put effort in any of all through any or all three of those things. And here, little old me, I'm just joking. Um, Henry writes the most amazing blogs um, at First Health Pro. His blogs are absolutely phenomenal. Okay, Trudy, you wrote two blogs. High five. Let me give you some rockers on that one. <laughs> Go, Trudy. Yes, that's what I love. She said, continue to do it while adding new clients. It's about timing. It is about timing. Um, okay, so so yes, all right, so Trudy's writing blogs too. Um, uh, what's my girl's name? Pam Scott. She's podcasting. You understand? Um, so she's doing her thing with the podcast. Asia said, what do you want the book to be about? I'm going too soon. I hear I'm a pretty good writer from my mom. Mom's a bias. I don't know why you're listening to your mom, but okay. <laughs> But also some professors in college. Okay, so that's great. All right, because yeah, my mom says all types of stuff, but she's, oh, my baby, you know. Um, so when we start talking about writing books for, for your niche space, I can't tell you what to write about. Again, you have to go into your niche market to find out what they want to read about. And, and that's the important thing. You're, everything is about your client. Everything is about your candidate. And the book can be geared towards clients or candidates. You can have two books. I want you to think about writing a book in a very strategic type of way, right? How can I tap into my candidate base for my niche market? And how can I tap into my client base for my niche market? Okay? Yeah, that's exactly right, Jackie. She's on it. That's exactly right. So, you know, all of those things, when you have, you put all of those things into play, you know, now you're, you're talking about a good recipe there. I lost my trade. I got excited. Judy said, wonderful news, Trudy and Pam. Um, so writing your book has to be a value proposition for both your clients and or your candidates. Okay. Necessity. Necessity. All right. Um, what else do we have here? We got so much going on. I'm missing so much. Angela's been talking to me. And Kimberly, okay. Um, Trudy says, starting out strong would be great, not scale, using groundwork behind the scenes. That's exactly right. Kimberly said, what is a good partnership with a company when they want to help fund your staffing agency? What should be the percentage of partnership be? Where, uh, where, uh, what things do you look out for? Kim, that's a great, great question. So I am not going to give you advice on that per se. That's something that you want to do. And I think that really depends on the value of your firm and the, and the amount of money that they're offering into the business. So when you say what type of, what, uh, what is a good partnership 
when they want to help fund? How are they coming into the business? What type of partnership are they um are you establishing with them is this like a 50 50 partnership is this an investment partnership so like all of those things matter when when you start thinking about having someone invest funds into your business the biggest thing that i want to tell you is get your attorney and your accountant because your dream team your core dream team for your business your core dream team for your business your core dream team for your business is you your accountant and your attorney <laughs> and then everybody else exists okay and not until that everybody doesn't exist until you have those people down because they're the people that are going to hold you down so i don't do any legal questions i don't want to be responsible but what I will say is to connect with your attorney and your accountant about that and also define how you want that relationship to be. How do you want that partnership to be? And since you're in the place that you're in, Kimberly, I want to rec I want to recommend this book to you right here. More important than money and entrepreneurs team. This is a really good book for you to read where you are right now. And anybody that, and I'll turn this around here so you guys can see this too. Anybody who, um, who is, um, you know, especially when I started talking about the three key people that you want on your team, Robert Kiyosaki, you know, I really digs that, drives that in really aggressively and um, in that book right there. Okay, y'all know I've, I'm in like book heaven. I've got hundreds of books over here. <laughs> Um, so, okay, so I hope that was somewhat helpful. Y'all are coming in with the questions tonight. I love it. I love it. I love it. I got to look on YouTube because YouTube has questions too. I know um, I've lost some people. They were asking me questions. I didn't catch them. I love you, YouTube. Please don't be mad at me. Let me see what I can make happen because I have more questions. People are still asking questions. That's great. Put your questions in the box. Let me know. Kimberly said, I'm in the auth I, I am an author of a job search book and workbook. Okay, an authorship. Thanks for letting me, what I miss her. Thanks for letting me know I should write a book for staffing as well. Exactly. Hey, Noni. She said, hey, everyone. Sorry I'm late. Came back from an event with Vincent Dowd. Oh, that's nice. Trudy's posting another podcast. And she, Trudy, I got to follow your YouTube channel. I didn't know you had a YouTube channel. You're doing it up. Is it your company's name? Put your YouTube channel link in the chat box for us to check it out and to like and subscribe. And if you guys are watching on YouTube now, can you like this video and subscribe too, please, for real? And for everybody who's watching this live, can y'all go to YouTube later and like and subscribe? <laughs> go D, plug it in. <laughs> um, oh my gosh, I was going to YouTube for something and I totally forgot. Okay, hold on one second. Hey, everyone. Oh, 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 to see my people. <laughs> All right, hold on. Live. Let's just hit pause. And let's see what the comments are looking like. What do we have here? Share, share, share this video. Thank you for liking. Got it. Okay. Oh, my gosh, so many things. So let me just see. Danica, hey, hey, Asia. Hey, Letitia. She said, I love your videos. I can't wait to meet you in person. You inspire me. Mwah! That's for you. Uh, Joyful Noise. Really have been enjoying your videos. Thank you for all your value info. Thank you so much. Hey, Zaid from India. You're awesome. Okay. He says that I need to put eye contact with the camera so that he can have more concentration. Mwah! I love you. Um, Sean Bolton, give me examples of niche requirements that whatever position it is that you're focusing on. That's an example of a niche requirement. Uh oh, I hope I don't lose y'all YouTube. My battery's going dead. Asia said, um, I met with a potential client yesterday. I'm working with him to find him an assistant. Woo! That is Morocco worthy. Yes. All right. I love that. Janice said, I'm a 15 year corporate recruiter to recruiting manager. I'm interested in starting my own staffing business. A coaching call with you on six, seven to get on track. Yes. I love it. High five. Woo. Yes. You can do both. That's fine. Son of Nook, how can a novice get into recruiting full time? Is there an entry level job for recruiters? There are a lot of staffing companies out there that are looking for entry level recruiters. 
and they'll teach you how to recruit in the business. But be careful when you do that. If your goal ultimately is to start your own business after working in a recruiting firm, nine times out of 10, that recruiting firm is going to put a nice fat non-compete on your bill. So you would have to wait a period of time before you were able to actually implement your recruiting business. So be super mindful of that if that's what you're going to do. That, you know, that, but it's definitely doable. Um, let me just see. Um, try staffing companies that may be looking. That's perfect. Yep, that's perfect. Okay, so they're on it. So great. I was over here. I missed all of that. Let me make sure I didn't miss anything here. No, hold on. I got something here. Okay. Um, Asia, I'm planning. Okay, so Asia says, I'm planning an event in two weeks for healthcare specialists. Created an event on Facebook will be my first ever event. I've also switched from YouTube to webinar. Sorry for the confusion. <laughs> Get it, Asia? Yeah, she's doing something in her business. She's doing something exciting. She's creating an event for healthcare specialists. She's tapping into her niche network. She's being creative about it. I absolutely love it. That's what this is about. It's about really getting into your business. Thank you so much, LaGretta. Thank you so much. I appreciate you for being here. So awesome. <laughs> okay. Um, so you switch from YouTube to webinar. What does that mean, though? So like you're not using YouTube for your videos your, or, um, to, or to do your webinars or like who are you using for your webinars today? And y'all know one of my favorite um, platforms when, you, when you're doing videos is ClickFunnels. You guys know I love ClickFunnels. It's like one of my favorite platforms. No, Trudy, I just subscribed to your channel. Yes, please subscribe to Trudy's channel. <laughs> Noni said, D, how can I reverse market? Okay. Ooh, okay. This is a good one. Trudy says, how can I reverse market a client that just got laid off? Now, a client that got laid off or a candidate? Let me just make sure I got that right. A client or a candidate? Mm. I'm interested to hear what she has to say. I just want to make sure she was valid with that statement. And we're going to talk about that. Because I've really been talking a lot lately. You know, I know you guys saw in the thread where Pam and I were talking about skill marketing. And you know that I always say that in your, okay, candidate. Okay, I just wanted to know because that would have gotten very cool. But you know how I always talk about um, candidates, right? Um, um, that in your business, you should challenge yourself to skill market at least one candidate, you know, every week, a new candidate every week. And, and really, that's not hard, right? It's just about taking an hour or two out of your day and doing sales and business development in a different way. If you follow my formula, <laughs> formula, <laughs> if you follow my formula, you know that you've spent a good amount of time establishing relationships with candidates within your niche. When you're skill marketing someone, typically it's someone that companies can't find very easily or very quickly, right? It takes time um, for companies to find somebody like this. This person isn't actively looking. They're not um, pushing their resumes because if, if they're easily found and they, it, it's not as exciting, I guess. It's not as sexy, right? But if you have someone, if you have someone, no for this right now when I mean level up. <laughs> If you have someone who is in the market like um, a candidate is, let me just ask, um, do you find that this candidate is an awesome candidate? Somebody who you would feel proud about um, connecting with clients? The second question I want to ask is, when you're with this candidate, can you find out some amazing things that this candidate has done? right? Because once you start moving into the process, and Pam Scott, this is really for you too. Once you start moving into the process of marketing your candidate, you want to take the time to, you've got to know what value that candidate brings, right? Tonight, the whole topic of tonight's Q&A call has really been around value proposition. And you, you have to provide a value proposition for your, uh, for your, uh, on your candidate 
for the, the company that you want to submit them to. So I like to find out things like what they've made, what they've saved, what they've achieved, what they've been acknowledged for, um, what they did to turn the company or help turn the company around. Did they help save money? Did they help save a client? Did they create, build or develop something? Um, did they generate a certain amount of money for the company? Um, did they keep the company from going afloat? Like, what value did this person actually bring to the company that they're currently working with? That's going to require a conversation with you and that candidate. Once you do that, you take that information and you market that information to potential companies that you think want someone who is who would benefit them like he would. So that's where a lot of people screw up with their skill marketing. They just forward a blind copy resume and want someone to bite. But you have to be able to show the level of value that that candidate brings in order for it to be enticing enough for a hiring manager to say, you know what, that's somebody I would be interested in seeing. Does that make sense? Well, if you're uncomfortable, so... This is what I would say. If you're uncomfortable, good. <laughs> because being uncomfortable means that you're stepping into new territory. So like, you know, I, I wouldn't say if, if he's not all the way in your niche, I would say test your waters, test it and analyze it because it, you may find that it doesn't take a lot of time. You know, you send it out to two or three people, they all bit and you got you a placement, right? But if you, but don't invest too much time because they're not in your niche. However, I do want you to think about all the different angles that this, this skill marketing can potentially generate for you. So uh, think about your skill market in a very strategic level, at a strategic level, from the perspective of, uh, yet this is the type of position that he wants. Do do any of the companies that you work with carry that type of position? And now you're bringing more value add. Um, what other types of companies do you want to work with in your niche on a consistent basis that may have a need for this type of position? Because this position could be the open doorway for you to get into that company. So really looking at things from a very strategic perspective is going to be super important. Is that, yeah, I see she giving me hearts. I love you, Trudy. <laughs> Step out your comfort zone and do it. Like, yeah, why not? Hey, D, in your niche, how many types of roles should you focus on in your niche? No more than three. If you're a one-man firm, no more than three. Three is overwhelming if you're a one-man. When if I say that you, I always, this is my thought process. Like, when I did my business, I solely focused on recruiters. That was it. Just recruiters. I didn't go into HR, directors, stuff like that until much later on. I solely focused on recruiters and made a name for myself in that space. That's why I have a half a million people in 11 face, uh, uh, LinkedIn groups, right, that are all recruiters. Because I really focused on building my recruitment space. Right. And then once you do that, then you start duplicating that process in other niche areas, custom to that niche area. And then you grow the business and scale the business organically to a, ge a, a, a generalist firm or a niche, a full niche firm. But I want you to be very realistic about doing this business. It, it doesn't make sense to come into this industry filling every position. It doesn't give you a strong value proposition and set you apart from the 19,408 other staffing agencies. Plus, you're one person. Many of you are one person who've never ran a staffing business before, much less a business. Like, focus on one position. I promise you that if there is more than 365 open positions for that job title, that's way more than you're going to fill in one year by yourself. You are living on a gold mine. Like, don't, don't think too. And then once you master that one position type, over exceed, you create a goal. I won't add on another position title until I've generated 300K. Once you hit 300K, put another one on. Now you have a little bit of capital to hire somebody to hold, to, to work the niche that you've already established. And then you go and establish the next niche. Be strategic and take your time about it. This is a business that you're building. How many of you take the time to rush childbirth? 
How many of you have had a baby or know someone who's been pregnant and you were, and while the baby's in a, come on, come on, come out, come out now, now, now. <laughs> it doesn't happen. You've got to wait the nine months until the baby gets here. The baby has to cook. Your business is the same way. Stop trying to immediately hit that ass. Stop <laughs> dating analogy. Stop trying to force a premature baby. Birthing analogy. Stop trying to force the tree to grow out the ground. A planting analogy. I can give you millions of analogies. Things take time. Be okay with that. You are building something. The Empire State Building wasn't built overnight. What are you rushing for? What are you rushing for? When that baby is in your belly, you are loving that baby. Even if you're a man, you're oh, long, 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 honey, eat the right foods, drink the right, don't smoke, don't drink, more veggies, walk, honey. More sex, right? All the things that make sure that that baby is going to be protected and as healthy as possible. That's what you do. When you plant a seed, you water that seed, make sure it gets sunlight. You do all the things that are necessary to nurture that seed so that it grows into a beautiful tree, a beautiful flower. Your business is no different. Be strategic about launching your business. Make strategic decisions. Your CEOs. If you're moving from an employee place, you're a CEO now. You've got to switch it off and on. I love you guys. <laughs> I love you guys. I love you. I love you. Yes, that's exactly right, Janice. I'm glad you stayed on as well. I show people how to start and scale their very own niche recruitment and staffing business. That is correct. All right. Awesome. Trudy, she says, how do you get over the insecurity of being knowledgeable enough when in recruiter groups or a room full of HR managers asking for a friend? How do you get over the insecurity of being knowledgeable enough when a rec when recruiter groups or a room full of HR? Um, how do you get over it? Read more. That's it. Read more so that you have value to bring to the table. Get into one of the things, one of the first assignments that are in, I'll help you out, Ronaldo, in one second. One of the first assignments in um, the academy is about, uh, um, the homework assignment is about doing research. Research is something that should happen every day. There is no question. And I have told you guys a million times, because everybody asks, how do I find time to research? Sit, when y'all sit on the toilet, I know this is gross, but I'm dead serious. Like take an extra five minutes and do nothing but go through your Google alerts and get just get a little bit of information so that when you go to the meeting, you're somewhat prepared or go to bed 15 or 20 minutes later than you typically do or get up 15 or 20 minutes earlier than you do. So you can take the time to sit down and see what's going on in the world around you. But when you when and, and you, when you do that and you start to internalize what you read, when you go into meetings, you won't feel insecure because you'll walk in there knowing you know more than them. You'll be enlightening them. And then, and only then, are you a true value. Hello, high five for your friend. Let her know. That's what makes it value. That's, that's where your value comes in. I got my hair braided last night super duper late. It was like insane late. A set of twins braid. They braid my hair. And um, and one of my clients, like my, I didn't get through to one. One of them canceled. It was like so much going on. And um, and I, I, I was thinking, I forgot what I was about to tell you guys. <laughs> I lost my train of thought. I saw Constance. Constance, this is your fault. <laughs> I lost my train. I was like, oh, Constance is here. Hey, Constance. I lost my train of thought. It's okay. I'll come back to it when the time is right. It wasn't meant to be said clearly. Candace said, I love this. Latasha said, wow, good info. Um, okay, so I'm still working with someone on creating a webinar for resume writing and candidate coaching services. That's awesome, Ronaldo. Skill market. Skill market is the art of taking a candidate that is um, outstanding. Typically in recruitment and staffing, they call them the MVP, most valuable placement, or the MPC, most placeable candidate, 
or MVC, most valuable candidate. Um, but this is a candidate that's super rare to find or they're not necessarily on the market or easily found and you market them to a company that has an open position typically sometimes if you are strategic enough and some of you are not here but some of you are if you're strategic enough and you're really tapping into your niche network when you're tapping into your niche network and you understand the types of moves that these companies are making within your niche space you may be able to predict what is needed and and then skill market a candidate that may be useful a great example of that would be right now i am very heavily aggressively stalking elon musk okay online right in my linkedin sales navigator i want elon musk on my web on my podcast so before i reach out to elon musk i have to get to learn and understand his company well, you'll see the fluctuations with this electric car and the spray ships that he's building where things will happen and things are great in his business. And, and then at some point, things are were going down. And you know, the media is like brutal when you make a mistake. If a car crashes and someone like the electric cars, they just dig, you know, they dig them in, you know what I'm saying? And so watching him. So when things crash, then if I'm into my niche market, I only know that his business is only going to go up. He's going to try again. He's going to be looking for something new. So if I'm really into my niche market, let's say I, I place electrical engineers, you know, or something, electrical design engineers, I may start reaching out to my electrical design engineers. Hey, did you hear what happened to Elon and that such and such? You know, what do you think was the issue? You know, and then kind of take that conversation, see if we can turn it into an opportunity to promote him to um, to Elon's, um, the Tesla Corporation, and, and then that's skill marketing him, marketing him into that company. That's skill marketing him. So that was the the answer to that question. And I just gave you just like a high strategic, a high, high strategic view of what that could be like. So that can be at the simplest level. I just gave you something pretty strategic. Um, somebody said, I've been battling the negativity in my mind, D, y'all, by wondering if I can do, do this on my own. Working in recruiting and staffing for years, I've always been confident as an employee and knowing that I have the certainty of a regular paycheck. Any thoughts on how to combat this? Um, I, there's a guy that I love on YouTube. He, um, his name is Eric Thomas. And he asks one of the most pro, pro, prolific questions that anybody could ever ask. And this is the question that I want you to ask to yourself. And this is the question that I ask to myself when it's about working out, right? Um, but this is the one that I want you to ask to yourself about this business. And that is, how bad do I want it? That's the key question. And, and so if you can answer that question, then you can gauge your level of interest in continuing to move forward. You can gauge your, your level of determination from that point forward right so um that question is a gauge for you so it's very easy it is super easy to go back and work for someone else so easy that is your comfort zone and your comfort zone is always easy to go back. i'm about to start crying i'm not going to do this because i'm talking to myself about this working out thing Right. It's easy for me to say that I am so passionate about work that I don't have the time to get up and work out. It's easy to go back and get a job for you. It's the same thing. Right. And so the question is, how bad do you want it? How bad do I want it, D? How bad do I want to be able to fit my clothes? How bad do I want? It? I want it so bad that I'm willing to step out of my comfort zone, go jogging twice a day and see my trainer, change my eating habits. For how long, D, until I screw up and then I'm going to start back again? And what if you screw up again, D, then I'm going to start again? And what if you screw up again, D, then I'm going to start again? And when do you stop, D? I don't stop until I exceed my goal. 
So now it's time for you to answer that question. How do you, how do you gauge that, you know, how do you gauge how much you want to make this happen? Negative thoughts can easily be detracted. Why? Because you created the thoughts. They're your thoughts. You have 100% complete control. 100% complete control. And if you just if they just if you decide to allow them to come into your mind, you can also decide to allow to push them away and replace them with something that is more beneficial for your success. So this is just about taking control of your life. This business is is an example of you taking control and the negative thoughts that you are feeling right now is an example of your comfort your comfort zone screaming, "No, let me stay here now because I'm comfortable." But you're here on this call because something so much more in you says, "Yes, that comfort zone feels good, but I also know that I am worthy of more." that I am better, that I can do better, that I can achieve more. And I deserve that because I'm worthy. So you have to decide. You have to decide, my love. You know I love you, Kimberly. Yeah. I love you. Everything is always working out for you. Always working out for you. You have to know that. All right. Okay, so Judy, you asked a great question. That's right, Judy. She's cheering me on. Okay, so you said, but didn't you say that a candidate is not looking? How does that work? A candidate can be looking or not, but it's about how aggressively they're putting themselves out there, Judy. So like if a candidate is on the market and they're reaching out to recruiters, hey, Ida, they're reaching out to recruiters, they're you know, posting every, you know, they're um, um, submitting their resume for every job order. That's not somebody that you really want to market. That's somebody that could easily be found if he's not already putting himself out there. He's probably sitting in a million uh, applicant tracking systems, potentially, right? But if he's somebody like for her candidate just got laid off and he hasn't yet hit the market, he hasn't hit the circuit yet, or somebody who doesn't have a social media present, but they're presence, but they're doing amazing things. Those are the, the people but somebody who you can just show value, Judy, honestly. I mean, there are ways to take a typical candidate that's already actively out there and then re reframing his narrative so that he shows his value um, in, a, in a more strategic way. Uh, but you would have to put a little more work into that, right? You have to put it, but it is doable, okay? Um... Let me see. Trudy said, if you want to succeed as bad as you want to breathe, then you will be successful. Like, I got to like that. I'm not hanging out with y'all no more. I'm hanging, <laughs> I'm hanging up. Y'all player. Y'all be playing around here. Y'all having fun? Are y'all having fun? Facebook group, YouTube, y'all having fun? This is what we do on our Q&A calls. We get into it. We talk about personal things. We talk about professional things. It's all about moving your business forward. That's what this community is about. It's about bringing your ideas to life. It's about and actually doing it. And it's about, you know, impacting lives and impacting society in a most amazing way and doing it with people who are just as exciting and just as passionate as you. That's what this is all about, you know, and getting your questions answered for sure. Uh, Constance says, fear is one of the enemy's main weapons to try to pull you off course in life. But just because the enemy brings fear doesn't mean you have to respond to it. Instead, the very moment you first feel fear, you have to resist it. You have to act against it. If you make the mistake of dwelling on your fears and start thinking about all the reasons why you can't do what God is telling you to do, then it won't be long before you develop a stronghold in your mind that will keep you stuck where you are. Instead, resist fear and stay strong in faith, knowing that God loves you and has called you according to his purpose. That's from our, one of our favorite staffingpreneurs, Constance. That's to you, my love. You see that love? That's some real love flowing right there. Y'all know y'all feel that love energy. 
I feel it. That was really sweet. Y'all getting it in. Jackie Griever, hey! Woo! She said, what's up, my peeps? <laughs> Jackie, we're streaming live from the Start a Staffing Biz Facebook group and from YouTube. And honestly, I had another phone here. I was trying to get um, Periscope on here tonight. I was just going hard. I'm feeling really good. Back, Glad to be back and working and getting things done. Any more questions? Any more successes? Anything you guys need? Uh, Constance Asia said, thank you so much. She said, tell Constance, thank you for me, D. Anything you guys need. So I'm going to be doing another video in the group live tomorrow about this, this, all the new stuff. I know I've been talking about it, but y'all know my schedule is like crazy busy, but I am working, working, working. And so we are going to make that happen. Yep, you should, Candice. Just a little bit. You definitely should, just a little bit. Um, and we're going to get, I'll be putting the announcement out about, about the, the new groups. Like I told you, we've broken them down now. So for the people who need to set up, it's really done. I'm going to put the link in, the, in the, the chat box, but just know I haven't created the welcome video. So if you guys get started, there's no welcome video there. Oh my gosh. So I'm going to do that as soon as I get off the line with you guys. I have one more jog tonight that I am determined that I'm going to finish. I'm going to meet my calorie burn goals today. <laughs> and um, hold on. Okay. So that's going to be the new one. So now y'all know we're moving to three groups, okay? Set up, which is the jumpstart program where you set up your niche recruitment and staffing business from, from legalization through strategy before implementation. We call that through pre-sales, okay? Then you graduate. It's really a prerequisite to be in the core academy program. Your core program is the million mile walk. Okay, the million mile walk is our go get up program. Set up is the set up program. Get up and go is our million mile walk. Okay, that means your business is 100% up set up. You are ready to take straight to create strategies that you haven't already created and to implement those strategies into your business. Okay. Um, you're going, this is a year long program for the one, for the million mile walk. Okay. It's a year long program. So most of you have been with me for many years. <laughs> so, uh, you know, let's, let's bring this, let's, let's change the, the, the vision a little bit. So it's a year long program. The first 10 weeks of the program, we are in hardcore lecture action mode. Lecture action mode means two hours of lecture one video will be released i believe every day if not a couple of days a week with assignments that you need to do every day by the end of the week at the end of the week we check in for accountability and roll call once you get that so you do that for 10 weeks i'm going to give you i'm going to show you exactly everything you need to do when i say everything i'm talking about i've got this little camera here this is so y'all see this i know y'all see this y'all see this that's for my phone to go on and y'all see this that's for my phone to go on. this camera so you'll see me making calls sales calls you'll see me making recruiting calls you would then have to make sales and recruiting calls i am not playing about this program okay so for 10 weeks i'm going to give you teach you how to work in the business and run the business and you're going to create habits on working in the business once the 10 weeks is up you'll go into a coaching program until three months before your one year mark and that coaching program we're going to hold you accountable for the sales that you generate in your business and no i you i really should be we'll, we'll talk about that another time we'll, we'll hold you accountable so and holding you accountable is very simple it's just how many placements how many people do i have on hours uh, um how many uh, on um on billing and 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 we're really just tallying that up because when you get to your third the the last three months of the program you're going to go into kind of a, an expedited coaching um uh program so you'll come out of the standard and go into expedited because you only got three months left to hit your million dollar mark or whatever that goal is for you 
For some people, the goal is only a half a million and it can only be a half a million based on their niche and the business model that they're going, going after, meaning just direct hire. Some people are looking to scale this business to a multi-million dollar business. So that's one year, all right? Once you get to the end of the year, you'll get, you come to the, the annual conference, you'll get your award. It's gonna be a physical award since we're only doing one live event per year. And, um, and you'll get a certificate and maybe we'll throw something else in, I don't know. But definitely those two things. And you get massive accolades that you hit your million dollar mark. Once you hit your million dollar mark, then you graduate and you go into the private inner circle. The private inner circle is high, high end because you're taking your business from seven figures to eight figures. So we'll be doing, we'll be traveling with that program. That's where I'm doing most of my live events are for the private inner circle. So people who are doing over a million in years, those are the individuals that will be, um, that will be in that program. So you're gonna, it's step by step by step and I'm separating everyone based on where they are in the business. If you do your whole year and you don't hit your mark, you can go back into the next year again. You will pay again, but it won't be the same fee, right? So that's just for you to stay more into the coaching space and for you to hit your goal. I pray that many of you continue to stay until you hit your goal. I wanna see each and every one of you exceed that $1 million mark right? And really just rocking it out in your business. And I, I'm hoping that this method where I'm putting you in phases will be a great opportunity for you guys to really take your business and flourish. So I'm excited. Now, somebody asked, will the 30 day blitz challenge still take place? It will only for your million mile uh, walkers. So your million mile walkers, yes. And, and definitely for your private inner circles, it can take place as well. But there will only be three or no more than four per year final results or the winners will be announced with their certificates and trophies at the annual conference. So everything was ultimately gonna end up and lead to the annual conference. We are starting classes for both the setup and the get up in the next month. And I will be teaching the first class for the setup live, okay? After that, it will be recorded. So whoever's doing the live class, you will be a part of that. After that, everybody else will catch the recording. For the million mile mark, that class will only open four times a year and I will deliver it live, at least the lecture portion, live for all four classes throughout the year. So that's just us meeting on Mondays and Thursdays, okay? And, um, and so forth. So it's gonna be a little more condensed and it's gonna be a lot more hand-holding to make sure that you're getting through the business and um, we're gonna have a lot of fun, you know, building our business. I'm super excited. Coral, uh, we will, I will, I promise you when it's time, I'm gonna let you know. It will definitely be in the next couple of weeks that we'll put everything out because I really wanted it to start June 15th, but it's not gonna start now until right after because I want the class to start right when, um, before the holidays, right? Because next year we'll start a brand new class in January. So it's coming up for sure very, very quickly, okay? Yes, it's in, it'll be in your, hey, Karen, it'll be in the SPA group. I don't have a WhatsApp group number. This is for our paid group in Staffing Preneurs Academy. These are for people who are a part of the membership, and I'm just opening it up for everybody so you guys can see some of the things that we do to support our community of Staffing Preneurs who are looking to start and scale their niche recruitment and staffing business. So that's what tonight is, is a sneak peek. <laughs> it's definitely a sneak peek. Um, Shumadon says, Shumadon, I went out for a while, missed the pass up. Before leaving, I asked a question about requesting to tell examples of niche requirements. When you say niche requirements, what do you mean exact examples of niche requirements? Whatever, I did answer. So whatever uh, niche space that you're recruiting in that, you know, the requirements would be based on that niche position, unless I don't really understand your question fully. Definitely, you'll get a video in the group. Okay, guys, I absolutely love, love, love each and every one of you. I still have to meet with my staff tonight because we want to get the funnels finished so you guys can get in. Did you guys look for all the guys, for everybody's in the group? Check out the um, setup program. It's really cool. And, and let me know if you guys have any feedback. That'll be great. I did put the link in the chat box 
if it's something that you want to get involved with. Once we get all the videos in YouTube and some um, start a staffing biz group, I will put the link under this video so that you guys can have an opportunity to get the free training that um, is involved also with the, the setup program, not the get up, but the setup program. Okay. Okay. All right. I love you guys. It's Wednesday. We got through a Q&A call. Don't forget on Amazon, my book. Yes, I'm plugging my book. It's my first one. I just want to send them with bows to everyone. Mwah. All right. <laughs> I should give one away for anybody who didn't get a chance to buy one. Maybe we'll do that in the next video. I love each and every one of you guys. I want you to have an amazing night. And if you are watching on YouTube, check me out in my next video. Like this video, subscribe to my channel and leave a comment and share with somebody who you think may find this information to be useful. I really appreciate you and I hope you found much, much value in the information that was shared here on this call tonight. Mwah! You got to see me in my element. I love that. All right, start a staffing biz. Thank you so much for being here. And to my gracious staffing preneurs, I love each and every one of you. Mwah. I'm so glad to see you guys tonight. It was so great. Everybody, Noni, we had Coral, we had Jackie, we had T, we had, uh, who else? We had Kimberly, we had Constance, Trudy. Man, this call was fire. Henry Lando. Okay. <laughs> I'll see y'all soon. I'll see you guys in the group tomorrow. And everybody else, I'll see you guys online. Thanks so much for being here. I really appreciate you. Bye. Are you sure you want to stop?